Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you once again for joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. As I always tell you, I love the bergamot and I like that zing in the misty morning. It's just so good, so good. Look at this new cup that we just got in here. It's, what does it say here? Be grateful, right? Be grateful. Do you love that? Sometimes we just have to think about that a little bit on how fortunate we are. I like this. I'm going to be using this cup more often, I think. 2020 was such a hard year for everyone. I think if we just all stop for a minute and think about all the things that we have to be grateful for, I think it would be definitely positive for each and every one of us. I know I'm extremely grateful to be able to do this with you guys every morning. Um, talk with you guys live, sometimes chat, be able to do what I absolutely love to do and create, as well as my photography and videography, DP work as director of photography and whatnot. I love it all, all right? And to be able to do something that you love is definitely a blessing. We just have to think about all the things that we are fortunate for having in our lives, maybe our families, right? Family is always fantastic. Some people don't have family, right? Maybe a good job, maybe you have kids, whatever it is, but there's a lot of things to be grateful for. So anyways, think about that a little bit. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Nikon and Nikon finding rainbows and unicorns, guys. Rainbows and unicorns in 2020 for Nikon when it comes to camera sales. This is amazing news, amazing, absolutely amazing. But before I get into it, I wanna say that if you haven't went over to jchristina.com forward slash ebook, why the hell not? Go grab my ebook, it is free. Free is the best price, right? Go get it, jchristina.com forward slash ebook, 10 tips at making tack sharp images. There's something there for everyone, doesn't matter if you're an amateur, a pro am, a professional. Go grab it, once again, it's free, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. So, Back into the rainbows and unicorns. Um, something really big happened and it is of course Nikon coming into that spot or that position of sales that is just, no one would have thought this. I know I wouldn't have thunk it, especially over the, eh, the 2020 period of time when there was so much negativity out there for Nikon. Nikon's doing this, are they going out of business? What the hell's going on with them? Why are they doing this? Are they going to be able to put out another D850 and just crush it? Or are they gonna put out a D750 that had just countless recalls, if you remember? So they did it, they did well. And a camera retailer out of Japan, very similar to BCN. You know, I always do BCN awards, BCN rankings and whatnot to see where the industry is moving when it comes to camera sales. Well, a Retailer, their name is Map Camera. They are another one of these. They're out of Japan. So remember, take all this with a grain of salt because these are Japanese figures out of Japan and not worldwide. But over the course of many, many years, we have found that worldwide numbers are very close associated to Japanese numbers. What are sold in Japan? So are they gonna be exact? No, they're not, but still it gives us a view. All right, a top-down view a little bit of what's going on when it comes to sales. And I think that's awesome because that is what this channel is all about. Getting a little bit of data and then talking about it a little bit and discussing what you think. Do you think that they're moving forward? Do you think they're going backwards? And this provides a little bit of food for thought. Now, the number one camera, let me start out with that, in new camera sales for 2020, the end of 2020, that's December 2020, is the Canon EOS R5. When I heard that, guys, I'm like, how in the hell is that even a thing? The Canon EOS R5 had so many overheating issues and people just were just, man, it was rough, all right? Canon had it rough. They introduced that camera, which was definitely groundbreaking, 8K. It did all of this stuff. It was like everything stuffed into one camera. And before they released it, I said, what? It's not possible unless they somehow vent this camera. They need induction, they need to have cool air coming in, and they need to have exhaust to have that heat going out. If not, the damn thing is gonna overheat. And what happened? 
This isn't rocket science. I knew this because I shoot the Canon C-Series, which is their cinema line, that has a big fan in it to cool down the sensor. So we know that this is absolutely the case and sometimes you feel some heat coming out of that thing. So that was great for Canon as they pulled in number one. But what's more impressive here to me is that the number two, the second place in camera sales for 2020, December, went to Nikon for their Z7 Mark II. That is massive, guys. That is unbelievable. That's fantastic for Nikon. They come in number two. Usually Sony's always in there and Nikon's down here somewhere, right? They pulled it out, guys. Number two. And then in the third position, we have the Fujifilm X-S10, which is an amazing camera, right? Hands down, that is a ton of product in a small package for a small price for what you're getting. But now keep in mind, Canon's R5 came out right around July, I think. So they only had six months of numbers and they pulled in that first position with the EOS R5. But only having that period of time was one thing, but they also had problems when it came to quantities. Why? Because there was back orders and they just could not make these things fast enough because they had a supply chain problem, right? It was in short supply and they still were able to pull those numbers to come out number one in camera sales. That is amazing. And I'll get into that towards the end of this video. Now, as far as Nikon goes, this really helps them out a lot. It gives, I think, a lot of the Nikon fans out there and people that just use Nikon, it might not be, let's call them fanboys, a, a sense of, I'm okay. We're going to be all right. Nikon's not gonna be selling out anytime soon, all right? And that is really, really good. And seeing that it is actually one of their mirrorless cameras and not a DSLR is definitely helpful because in the past we've seen like the number one camera sold by Nikon was like a DSLR, right? So they're up there now and thank God they are, especially once again for all of the Nikon fans out there. Z7 Mark II pulls it out once again with second place. Now bear in mind also, the Nikon Z7 Mark II was released December 11th, I believe. So there was not a lot of time for them to make any type of sales, but they did. The sales obviously were crushing it, okay? Absolutely crushing it, but what they did what they did really well is there was an abundance of cameras available so that if you wanted a Nikon Z7 Mark II, you could just simply walk into the retailer and make that purchase. You didn't have to go into like a pre-order list or a reservations list or something like that to be able to get that camera. Walk in, throw down your money and walk out with a Nikon Z7 Mark II. That is awesome. And I wish that other camera manufacturers would do the exact same thing. I wish Sony would do it with their PS5, right? They introduced the PS5 and during the entire holidays, you couldn't find the damn thing. And if you did find it, you found it on eBay for $6,000. <laughs> so not great, not great at all. Now in November, which I find also interesting is that Fuji Films, that X, S10, which I said was an amazing camera, which it absolutely is. It is popular, it is high performing, and the price is just simply right, okay? It fell two slots to the third position, but it was in number one. It was the number one selling camera for November 2020. So that gives also some pause to Sony. Where in the hell are you, right? What is going on, Sony? Well, if we look at all of the numbers, we can see that Sony is there and let's take a look at where they are. So in the number one position, as we've said, is the Canon EOS R5. Number two, we have the Nikon Z7 Mark II. In number three, we have the Fujifilm X-S10. In number four, there it is, Sony A7S3. That is the brand new A7, which they're doing a really good job with. They're selling the hell out of it. But remember, it is a 12 megapixel camera in 2020. And some people liked that and some people didn't. It was a mixed bag, all right? Bear in mind, that camera is not about resolution. It's more about low light. 
The S has always been low light. Their R's have always been about pixels. How many pixels can they stuff in there? So it's still doing really well. In the fifth position, you have the Sony A7C. In sixth, you have the Nikon Z6 Mark II. So that's really good. Nikon comes in number two with the Z7 Mark II and in number six position with the Z6 Mark II. That's awesome for them. We also have Canon coming in in seventh with the EOS R6. That's also nice because that is one of the newer cameras, just like the R5. So we have the R5 in the first position and the R6 in the seventh position. And then in the eighth position, we have the Fujifilm X-T4. And then ninth comes the Sony A7 Mark III. That is an old camera. It's a couple of years old now, still on the list. Ninth, right? Not bad at all. And then finally in the 10th position, we have the Panasonic Lumix S5. So those are the numbers for new camera sales at the end of 2020. Well, how about used camera sales? Now, Sony always dominates this list and Sony A7 Mark III comes in the first position as they have like six months in a row. They always come in first because like I said, when the Sony A7 Mark III came out, I told many people to go and buy that camera if you're looking for a full frame mirrorless camera. Why? Because it was just under $2,000 and it just shredded it. There was everything stuffed into that camera. Now, ergo for me, I don't like it because for me, it's more like a box of cigarettes or something. That's not the way I hold a camera, but what you get dollars for dollars, all right? ROI, return on investment, value, definitely the Sony A7 Mark III crushes it. And as we can see here in the used market, it does. So let me go through this list. Number one, we have, like I said, the Sony A7 Mark III. Number two, we have the Canon EOS R. That is really good for Canon. We know that Canon has been crushing it with new releases, continuous, and it has a lot to do with lenses. People look at lenses and then they buy camera systems. If a lens is available for that specific camera system, they will buy into that system. If it's not, they'll look elsewhere. All right, I've said this in the past, lenses run the market. Now in number three, we have the Nikon Z6. That's the original Z6, which is nice. Nikon coming in there at number three. Number four, we have the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV, guys. Holy crap. Four, fourth position. <laughs> you got a DSLR that's ancient, not really ancient, but very old in consideration to all of the new technology, and it is not mirrorless. That's amazing. So once again, fourth place goes for the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. In the fifth position, we have a Sony A6400. In sixth, we have a Sony A7R3. In the seventh position, we have the Sony A7 Mark II. In the eighth position, we have the Fujifilm X-T3. That X-T3 is another one of those cameras that have been around for quite some time, but Fujifilm is a company that makes their cameras better as time goes by, instead of making them worse, and then later on, pushing people to go buy the latest and greatest, then basically they could have done that with just simply a firmware update. Fujifilm gives you new functionality to their cameras after you buy them by pumping in new firmware. Like I've told people in the past, Fujifilm was the company that sold a 1080p camera and literally two months later installed a firmware update that gave everyone 4K. That is amazing, all right? And that's one of the things that I do like about Fujifilm. Once again, they come in eighth with that X-T3. In ninth, we see the Nikon D750, and in 10th, Olympus OMD EM1. That is the Mark II. So overall, we see almost a pattern going on here. The companies are doing well, and all three of them, let's say, are doing quite well. We have Canon on top, as they've been for many, many, many years. We have Nikon, and we have Sony. And Fujifilm always comes in fourth, let's say, and then we have Panasonic and the rest. But what we do see is Nikon has bumped up to that second position when it comes to new camera sales for 2020 December. That is so, so good. Once again, rainbows and unicorns for these guys. That is awesome. Now, the one thing that we have to keep in mind that according to BCN and as well as Map Camera, they all say the exact same thing, that 2020 saw a 40% reduction 
a dip, a crash of camera sales. Now, what happens for 2021? I really don't know, guys. I don't know. We know that there's a lot of pressure on the camera market when it comes to sales due to smartphones. The smartphones are getting better and better and better. The cameras in them are getting better and better and better. And even if they're not, the AI, the artificial intelligence, all the stuff that they do behind the scenes is helping. You're dealing with a tiny sensor, but they're making the image better and better based on all this stuff that goes on inside of the phone. Why? Because they basically have like a computer to do so. Whereas a camera today, the processor in it is extremely weak in comparison to in a phone. So they make up the difference from using a tiny, tiny sensor in a phone, right? to very similar to a larger sensor on a camera, a proper camera. So I think that we're gonna see continued pressure on the camera market into 2021, but I think it's going to be alleviated a little bit by COVID falling backwards a little bit and also production coming up. Production has been a problem in it towards the end of 2020 due to COVID. There was a lot of shortages that were going on that pushed everything back even more. It enhanced the problem. So anyways, 2021, what do we see? I really don't know, but we do know that Nikon is back. They're back in the picture and hopefully they continue this way and their mirrorless full frame just skyrockets. We need to see them continue down this path. We need to see them also come out with new lenses continuously because once again, like I've always said, lenses drive the market. New lenses is imperative, all right? And the lenses that the photographers are in need of. A perfect example is with Canon. They're looking at putting out a extremely long, like a 1200 millimeter RF lens. That is very, very good for them to get people into their mirrorless. Why? Because People might need that lens. And if you don't find it in a Sony or in an Nikon, they're gonna go Canon. It's the same thing with their specialty lens that should be coming out, which is a tilt shift. Anyone that shoots buildings or if they need to get the camera orientation that correct in camera, so you don't have buildings that are like crooked, okay, you need a tilt shift lens. Well, according to the news, Canon will be coming out with a tilt shift lens for their R lineup, that is awesome, okay? And once again, I always say follow the lenses. If there's a lens that you need, you need to go to that system, whatever it is. I wanna see Sony do the exact same thing, put out a 1200 plus millimeter for their line and also Nikon with their Z series. We need to see some of these more specialty lenses come out. So we'll see what ends up happening for 2021. As we know, Canon is in the number one position, but Nikon pulls in with number two in camera sales for December 2020. So anyways, guys, I wanna hear from you. I wanna know what you think about all of these numbers, okay? Do you think that Nikon is finally getting it together and it is going to be all rainbows and unicorns for them or not? I wanna hear from you. I wanna know what your thoughts are. No fanboy stuff on this channel, just simply facts and then discussion, all right? No one is right, okay? Or we're all right. Either which way, it's just simply a discussion. So what do you think? In the comment area below this video, put those comments. Let me know what you think. Let's have this discussion. And also, if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. If you like it even then the least, anything that you see, we have about 450 videos here, give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel, that helps me, that helps everything. That helps the algorithm. The YouTube gods look kindly on the channel and say, yeah, maybe we should recommend this guy's stuff. That would be kind of cool. So once again, throw the video a thumbs up, that will be helpful. Also click this little bell icon right over here. So when I go live, you'll be notified. Or if a new video comes out, you'll also be notified immediately of it. Also, if you wanna to contribute to the channel in 2021, I would appreciate it. That's all you have to do is click the join button down here. It is a membership, it's a dollar, five dollar, whatever you wanna contribute per month, it's completely up to you, but it will help out the channel a lot. You'll become a member and I'll be able to throw you perks for doing so. And finally, if you haven't went over to my website as of yet, go check it out over at jchristina.com where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you 
and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That would be awesome. Also, if you're a subscriber, use promo code YT20 at checkout. Once again, YT20 at checkout, and you're gonna get 20% off everything that's in your shopping cart. Not one thing, everything in your shopping cart. So that's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.